What are the seven things, the seven stages, the seven elements that go into creating a trauma bond? My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and recover from toxic people and narcissists in your life and to transform your life after they've been in it. So the stages of trauma bonding, there is an entire playlist, check it out here if you need it on what trauma bonding is. What I want to talk about today is how it happens, the stages and what goes on within each stage that you might have experienced or are experiencing, you know, um, and if you are, you guys, let me know in the comments because this is not an easy thing. This is something that any of us who have been with toxic people and narcissists in particular have gone through, maybe are going through and talking it through, getting some support. I'm always happy to help in the comments as much as I can. Okay. The first thing is the love bombing. When they meet you, it's, it, it, that includes things like future faking, gift giving, acting like you are the best thing, soulmate talk. I mean, we're talking here not just about relationships as in romantic relationships, but even friendships can start this way or even workplaces, idealization, right? Um, that whole love bombing idealization phase that feels like something beyond any other connection with another human being. It feels like something real. Then what happens? that is very unhealthy is the next stage, which is the trust and dependency stage. Okay, this is the grooming phase. This is where they create situations so that you become dependent emotionally upon them. This is where little tiny glimmers of doubt might come in with giant massive love bombing on top of it to start this intermittent reinforcement that then makes you really, really concerned that you're gonna lose what you have. So this dependency and this trust you're starting to form with them, the reason it's unhealthy is there's nothing that is creating a foundation for it. It's being created by this person mirroring back to you parts of yourself, mirroring back to you things you've said that, that they pretend are their interest or their concern or that they've experienced the same thing things that make you trust a person. But the thing is, there is no foundation. There's no time. There's no testing the experiences. There's no watching them in life and how they are with other people. There's only this fast and furious, this streamlined grooming that is happening that starts to get you so dependent on that person, on the relationship itself, okay? Where you're checking your phone for texts, where you're so concerned, it, it stirs up anxiety at the same time as it's creating dependency and trust with that person. And then the next thing that happens is the devaluing, the devaluing, the criticism, the, the subtle put downs. And it may not come like they, like you're great one minute and knocked off your pedestal the next. It may be more subtle. Whatever it is, you may find yourself saying things like, I wonder if they still care about me. I wonder if they still like me. Oh, I hope they still like me. I hope I'm not doing anything wrong. Or you may be saying things to them like, I'm sorry for whatever it is when it really isn't something that maybe you ought to be sorry for. You know what I mean? Where you're starting to have the self-doubt. It could be so subtle that this devaluing starts happening and then once they're on the devaluing cycle, they stay there, okay? And it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. And then they start throwing in the intermittency of the love bombing and the devaluing, meaning they go back and forth between the two. So the next stage or the next element that happens, maybe it's thrown in there with the devaluing is the gaslighting. So once you start seeing who they really are and you start questioning things or you start holding a person accountable to something, which happens naturally in relationships, of course, they begin the gaslighting. They cannot take accountability. They cannot accept that they're not doing anything that isn't absolutely perfect because of course they are. They cannot allow anything that is your opinion or your needs or your point of view to be in the mix because that does not coincide with the narcissistic delusion that they live under about who they think they are, okay? And so the gaslighting starts. The gaslighting is so confusing, it is so destructive, creates so much self-doubt and so much doubt in the relationship. You don't even know why you're there and yet you're there. You think, what is happening here? 
why none of this makes sense you have arguments that are circular nothing makes sense anymore this confusion sets up a pattern in your brain and go watch those other videos for more information about that but this element is really a key element in creating these trauma bonds so another thing that starts to happen as the stages progress of trauma bonding is you give up you give in you give over you basically just start living with it just as it is it becomes normal you normalize okay you normalize in order to stay in the relationship and then the next thing that happens after that the progression as it continues is a loss of self okay and as you lose yourself to the relationship and you start to become living for the relationship itself and your whole life is about managing the relationship then you are lost to self you are fully immersed in the cycle with this person is all of this making sense you guys leave me some comments let me know what's going on with you if you are trauma bonded and while you're there hit the thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and let me know what you need as far as help for videos that might help you through this trauma bonding okay so <laughs> once you've lost your sense of self this is where people get stuck they heal from trauma bonding meaning they can get through the addiction and the feelings of needing to reach out to the other person but finding yourself again you see it's so important in every relationship you have in your life to also have a relationship with yourself and if that gets lost something is wrong okay and then the last thing is there is an addiction to the cycle well maybe it's not the last thing but it's the last thing I'm gonna talk about today which is the addiction to the cycle that is a physiological addiction to the cycle there is a dopamine release that happens okay we start seeking dopamine starts being released in the brain it is addictive Go back like I said and watch the videos on how trauma bonding affects you okay because I explain it more in detail there but this addiction to the cycle is a really hard place to be because that's when you realize wow I am actually addicted to this and that's when you have to take some accountability for it and start recognizing that you need help in the situation whether that be self-help finding coaching or therapy or friends or clergy or whatever it is to help pull you out of this and give you the support you need as you get yourself away from the situation so that's in a nutshell how the trauma bonding stages work what goes on if you guys have anything to add please let me know in the comments okay and i will see you guys next time take care